miles an hour is a major hurricane. Averages three last year. We had three. We were average last year for a number of hurricanes and number of majors. So this would be an above normal season. So why are they calling for such an active hurricane season? There are two main points that lead their team to believe that we may have a busy season. Number one is El Nino, and we'll show this in, in animation in a moment, but as we look at this video from above a very powerful hurricane, I believe this is Dorian. Uh, this is the one that hit the Bahamas many years ago. Notice how you can look down from space straight down all the way to the ocean surface. So this is a circulation that is stacked vertically. That's called an unsheared storm, and the unsheared ones can become these major monster hurricanes. There's no wind shear to blow it apart. That's what La Nina tends to do. It's the opposite of El Nino. El Nino can create strong wind shear across the Atlantic Basin and reduce storm count, but La Nina results in less shear over the Atlantic. And that's what we think we're moving into for the summer year, summer months. And that would predict more storms would not only form, but survive for longer as they wouldn't be blown apart as they come across the Atlantic by that wind shear, there'd be less shear, and those storms can also become much stronger. So that's why La Nina matters. Look at it this way. So again, that storm we were looking at from outer space where you can look straight down through to the ocean surface, that's a vertically stacked storm. That's a healthy hurricane, if you will. Normal hurricane wind flow, it wants to be vertically stacked, straight up and down. Stand it straight up and down, you can really get that circulation cranking and it, become, it can become a strong hurricane or a major hurricane. That is what La Nina can bring more of. And that, again, that's the season we're heading into. It's a La Nina predicted for this summer hurricane season. When you get more shear, it tilts the storm over, it disrupts the circulation, and you get a lower storm count and you get weaker storms in general. So with a lack of shear, in theory, we would get more storms forming. That's one of the big reasons why the CSU team thinks we may have an active hurricane season, potentially less shear. Again, all this is a forecast, but that's what they're looking at. The second ingredient is warm water. So we've got sea surface temperatures that have been well above normal actually for a couple of years and they continue to run well above normal. This is the sea surface temperature anomaly in the Atlantic Basin, which is the Gulf, the Caribbean and the open Atlantic as it stands right now. All of the major development region here is uh, well above normal, three, four, five degrees above normal right now and we're not, not even into the season yet. Above normal across the entire Caribbean, most of the Gulf has sea surface temps that are above normal right now, a couple of pockets of below normal. So what are the actual temperatures out here? Well, as of right now, sea surface temperatures in the Gulf, central southern Gulf 84, 84, northern Gulf 70. So 80 is the threshold to get tropical development. We need sea surface temps of about 80 degrees or above to get tropical development. So at the moment, the northern Gulf is below that threshold, but the southern Gulf is well within it. 84 is plenty warm to get tropical systems brewing once we get into the season. The Caribbean is way up there. Temperatures in the upper 80s, or even right now, and well above 80 degrees across the open Atlantic Ocean. So there's plenty of warm water out there. Now, I'll stress that just because you have lots of warm water doesn't mean you're going to have lots of hurricanes. However, when wind shear is low and you have warm water, that can lead to the development of more systems. They feed on that warm water once they develop in that low shear environment, and those can be the seasons where we have a lot of storms. And so that's why they're forecasting the busy season. Okay, is your name on the list? Alberto, Beryl, Chris, Debbie, Ernesto, Francine, Gordon, Helene, Isaac, Joyce, Kirk, Leslie, Milton, Nadine, Oscar, Patty, Raphael, Sarah, Tony, Valerie, William. So again, they're forecasting 23 storms. There are only 21 names on this year's list. So if we get to 23, we would go into the supplemental names list. We're not going to use the Greek alphabet anymore. We'd go into the supplemental names list. We'll just wait and see if we actually get that 23 named storm count to verify. But the bottom line is a couple of things. We may have an active season with a lot of storms. And sure, a lot of these could stay out over open water and you never even know they're there. But 
the more storms, statistically, the better chance one gets into the Gulf and potentially threatens us. So now's the time to be prepared before there's any stress, before there's any panic from any storm coming in. Make sure you know your evacuation routes, have food and water and supplies and medicine to last you at least a week. Because if we get a big hurricane in here, the pressure on our emergency responders is going to be so great that they may not be able to get to you and your family for a week. Power could be out for a month. It could be out for months if we get hit by a big one. That's just the bottom line truth. So think about what your family would do for that. We'll keep you updated with the latest information so that you have everything you need to keep you and your family safe this hurricane season.